Very excited to talk to her. It has been a while. There's a lot to discuss with Holly Holm. She is kind enough to join us on the phone right now. Holly, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to catch up. I appreciate you coming on the show as always. So uh, you, you've kind of laid low since July. Was that part of your plan? Did you just want to take a break from everything as far as media and stuff is concerned? You know, I've been super busy doing all the other things outside of actually training and, and fighting. Um, I just, uh, I mean, I've been to New York, Canada, LA, Las Vegas, and Florida all within the last like four and a half weeks. And it's all been for, you know, work or, or things that I had prior obligations that we decided to go ahead and just hammer away while I didn't have like a fight in front of me so that when I do have a fight, I can focus. So that's kind of where I've been. I've actually been working, but just not my favorite kind of work, <laughs> my, my kind of work. I want to be training, but, um, you know, we've just been kind of taking care of some other business outside of that. And, you know, I'm hoping to be able to fight soon. And, you know, I had my break in my thumb in my last fight and it hasn't been a hundred percent, but it's almost there. I have been training, um, just needs a little more time and I'll be ready to rock and roll. So, um, just kind of, uh, I'm training. I'm back at the grind. I'm back home right now. I just got home last night and, uh, just, that's where I'm at. That's what I've been doing. Okay. So there's a lot there. Um, uh, starting with your, your initial response, what kind of stuff are you doing? If you don't mind me asking, like you're traveling all over. Are we, t are we talking about like, uh, promotional stuff, uh, marketing stuff? Like, what are you doing? Uh, like, more like sponsorship stuff. Um, New York was a thing for Vera Bradley. Um, Canada was a thing for a new sportsplex that they're putting together. And they had, uh, guests there. Um, Florida was for a sponsor. Um, Las Vegas was for a sponsor for the Mr. Olympia show. And, wow. um, Los Angeles was for some meetings with stuff. So it's just kind of been a lot of random stuff. Uh, do you still have the cast on your thumb? No, I'm pretty good to go. Um, I've been able to do, you know, I've been sparring actually, but I just spar with my left hand. You know, I've been trying to get a little more, um, kind of throw together some combinations, making work on a lot of other things, using my jab more and just working on, on combos still. And, um, I can't punch 100% with my thumb yet, but about 80%. And I can do pull-ups and things now, which is great. So there's still certain motions I can't do. Um, but in a very short amount of time, I'm going to be able to go 100% before we know it. So um, I don't want to start from square one. That's why I've been training right now, just to kind of keep it moving, keep flowing. I don't want to, you know, feel too out of shape when right. I'm back to 100%. Um, and, and did you break the thumb in the Valentina Shevchenko fight? Yes. Do you recall what point uh, you did? I remember the exact punch, and I haven't watched the fight yet, but if I was to put a guess on it, I would say the fourth round. So, And it has nothing to do with why I lost the fight, but that's for sure. I, I didn't perform well. I had you know, almost like a mental block in there, like, telling myself to go and I wasn't going and, and we had the right game plan. I just didn't perform it. Um, you know, a lot of what she was throwing with her counter hooks and things like that, we knew that was going to be there. There was nothing that should have, you know, shocked me or anything. She's very tough. I take nothing away from her, but, um, you know, breaking my thumb was not why I lost the fight, but yeah, I, I was going, I threw an overhand. I, I'm, I know what punch it is if I watched it, wow. fight, but I'm pretty sure it was in the fourth round and, through an overhand and I caught nothing but thumb and I just thought I jammed it. I thought, Ooh, that's going to hurt later. And I threw another one and I thought, Oh no. Yeah. That one's real bad. And so I kind of gave it a couple of days and I didn't have a lot of full motion in it. And it, of course it blew up like it was blew up. Like, you know, you blow up like a medical glove and the hand part gets like really swollen and the fingers are small. It's like what my hand looked like. And I finally went in for x-rays. I just pulled the orthopedic surgeons. I thought, I said, you know, my hand, I, I feel like it's just dislocated. Like, I've been able to do stuff with it, but I just want to, I don't know if it needs to be reset or what. So they did x-rays and they're like, well, the reason why it feels dislocated is because it is, but it's <sighs> broken and dislocated and it was shattered. Like, wow. the base of it broke off and split apart. 
and one part of the thumb was like sticking in in between where the thumb had the rest of the thumb had broken off and my index finger and it was just kind of um I don't know, it was kind of a mess mangled mess in there and so they had to pin it and reset it. But um I I'm feeling great. Like I've been able to do a lot on it already, so um I can't complain, you know. In hindsight, do you think that you took that fight too quickly after the 196 Misha Tate fight? No, I don't ever put any excuse on anything. Um, I just didn't perform well, and that's all there is to it. And, you know, I, I, I felt great. I felt physically fine. I had a great training. I, everything in our game plan was good. So... There's no excuse, and I'm not going to say I took anything too soon or any reason why. I just didn't perform well. Is there a particular reason why you have not watched it yet around three months later? <laughs> I'm really bad about watching film to begin with. Oh, okay. I know that it's definitely, I mean, this is definitely, I'm going to probably take a real, it's, it's going to be a real big ego check when I do, and so I think I'm just waiting so I can at least go 100% so I can dive in, just watch it, and, and you know, roll from there. I don't know. Um, um, usually it takes my coaches saying, all right, let's sit down and watch this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, you've had a long and storied career. And by the way, congratulations on the uh, Guinness Book of World Records honor. First, oh, thank you first person to have a, a, a title in boxing, a major title in boxing and mixed martial arts. I think that came out last week. So what an honor that is. Another one to add to your, you. your mantle. But um, you've been around for a long time. Was that one of the more frustrating nights of your athletic career because it just felt like you couldn't really get going against her? Absolutely. And, and yes, because she's a good counter puncher. She's very fast and she's very slick with things. Um, but like I said, I know that there's, you know, the game plan that we had was definitely a game plan that would work, and I just I really didn't capitalize on that time. And I always say that I, when I get in there, I want to make sure and make the most of it at that time and not wait till the fight's over and say, I wish I could have, should have, would have. Well, that's exactly what happened this time. And so it is very frustrating for me. Um, but a learning experience at that and. Um, I choose to always want to learn from my experiences. I don't want to sit back and sulk um, or make excuses. That's just not not me or how I am. So, yeah, it was a frustrating night for me. But um, I want to push to just do better. Uh, I, I went on a bit of a rant afterwards because I, I sort of reached my breaking point of this narrative that was being put out that you made this massive blunder by coming back to fight at 196, that you came back to fight in July, that you didn't wait for Ronda. And it, it was annoying to me that you were being asked about it leading up to the fight, that it was the first question asked to you after the fight. Did you reach a breaking point as well? I just felt like it was so disrespectful. Meanwhile, 196 was a huge success. Uh, that, that that card in July was seen by like four and a half million or so people on Fox. I mean, it doesn't seem right. like there was a bad business move done there. You win, you lose in this sport, that's going to happen. But yet you continued to be sort of berated for making these business decisions. Did that get um, annoying at some point? It is annoying because a lot of people that do that, I think, you know, they're not, I don't think they ever listen to all of these other, you know, kind of interviews or articles or anything that come out for me, it's, um, I like to fight. I don't know why people think that I am taking fights for money. It drives me crazy. It's like, I wanted to fight because I wanted to get in there and fight. I had nothing to do with, oh, I should have waited for this money fight or that money fight. That is not why I fight. And so whatever people say, I guess, is their own opinion. That has nothing to do with what I shoot for, or what my goals are, and it doesn't, you know, I, I, I always tell myself I'm never going to fight for money, only for passion, and I want to stay true to that. Are you disappointed? That's what I was doing, just fighting because I wanted to fight. That's it. Yeah, and, and is, I mean, that's what this whole thing is about. You have to want to do it, especially doing something like walking into the cage, I think. Um, yeah. Are, are you disappointed that you didn't get the Ronda fight upon her return? Did you want that fight next? Um, you know, honest, I, um, I 
don't feel like I'm in a spot to really say what I want. I didn't have good performances in my last two fights, so why should I sit here and walk around and say what I deserve? Uh-huh. I've never done that in my career anyway, and, you know, I'm curious to watch the fight and see how it turns out, but I'm not um, I'm not in any means, you know, pissed off about it or anything. Um, I'll just have to... I just want to keep training and win whatever fight might come my way. And that's really, that's it. How do you feel about her getting a title shot upon returning? You know, I think it it, it is, you know, you're off for a year and you come back for the title shot. A lot of people would say, but then again, she was the most dominant champion. So I don't feel like it's necessarily, you know, out of the question to do something like that either. So, um, I, I just try to stick my my mind into training and, and do what I can for me, and I try not to get too involved with what I think should be going on promotion wise. I'm not a promoter; I'm a fighter. And the day that I feel like I have the best answers for that, maybe I should jump to promoting. You know, huh. I don't. I know a lot of fighters sometimes have their opinions about it, but um, I've just been consumed with my own team and my own thoughts and things I want to work on and learn and. Um, I've never been here before. I have two losses in a row and that's never happened in my career in my life. Uh, so I'm definitely experiencing something new right now, but I want to rise above from here. Have you been offered your next fight yet? Um, I'm sure we'll schedule something in the next few weeks. Okay. Uh, I know that they probably don't really want to set something 100% until I'm 100% released, uh, to train. So... I think we're getting close to figuring that out, but there's definitely no specific answer right now. I respect the fact that you don't want to ask for something next, but if you had your druthers, would you like to be on that same card as Ronda only because the title is being defended? It's good to line up with the title fights. Is that something that you're, you're seeking? Uh, no, I just want to fight and I want to win. That's, that's my it. Goal. I, that's really as simple as I want to think right now. Um, what fight it is, it doesn't matter to me. I want to win just as badly whether it's on a big card or not. Uh, I, I want to win if it's not even on TV. Hmm. You know, even in practice, I still want to punch my teammates more than they hit me. <laughs> I mean, the name of the game. So all I'm really focused on is a victory, and that's it. Uh, what do you think the chances are that we see you before the year is up, given the hand and the recovery and all that? Is that is that likely? It's likely. Okay. Definitely likely. I don't know, you know, I think when I have my next doctor's appointment, I'm sure that's going to be all right. You're a hundred percent a go, but even still I'm able to train right now. So I want to make sure that I'm not starting from square one. So that's why I'm training right now. Um, like I said, I'm still, um, I'm still sparring and I just tell the guys, do whatever, you know, do whatever you want to do. I don't want to stop you from training. Just really at the time being, um, I was just, which actually this week it will probably be okay, but I was just at first telling them, just don't take me down because I it didn't, it wasn't good for me to take, like break the fall necessarily. And that's really as far as um, I had gone with that. Other than that, I just, I've been training. I just spar with one hand, not two. And it's been working out, so I'll just keep with it. What was your reaction when you saw Misha lose the belt to Amanda Nunes after all that? Was that weird for you to see your title kind of move around like that? Um, you know, I'm I'm one of those that if I lose to someone, I want them to beat everybody else because huh, yeah, I, I don't want to lose to someone who loses to someone else, you know? And I don't know, I guess I just, um, I didn't really, wh- whoever won just made the best fighter win. I guess I really didn't care too, too much, but I do always want the person that beat me to win. Um, I know that she had said a lot of stuff, you know, probably not even a true champion. She hasn't even defended her about one time. So sometimes stuff like that, it's kind of like when people eat their own words. Sometimes I don't mind seeing that either, but when it really comes down to it, you know, may the best fighter win, and I want everybody to eye fight. The eye fight go beat everybody else. Um, that means I'm, be- you know, I'm 
I'm up against the best, I guess. Your story has been told uh, many times, and I'm wondering at this point, after the year that you've had, after the, the craziness of the end of last year, Melbourne and all this stuff, do you still enjoy fighting as much? Forget about the politics and, and the annoyances and the money and all that stuff. Is it still as much fun as it was when you were climbing that ladder? Um, I think it's just, you know, that's kind of a... There's been things that I haven't enjoyed with it, but I still enjoy fighting, yes. And um, I think that's all... I think one thing I want to do is just do... I mean, I like the traveling and meeting new people, but it's not necessarily my... I like to be at home with my team training and at the grind. That's what I enjoy. So, yes, I still enjoy fighting. Um, So I just am kind of wanting to, you know, I think that's why I've been so busy lately doing the other stuff that's been involved with, you know, my quote-unquote work. However, when I'm training again, um, I can kind of just train and focus on that because that's what I really want to do. I love to fight, and I... I love to train, and I don't know if I'll ever be satisfied, you know, doing anything else. So huh. that's all I really want is the passion of fighting, and, um, you know, we'll see what happens so, as, as the opportunities come. Do you think that you'll be someone who fights into their late 40s because you love it so much? You know, I don't know. Um, I think if I felt like I knew the day I'd be done, that means that I would already feel ready to be done right now, and I'm not. Um, I've actually had a couple conversations lately. People are like, what do you want? I'm like, to win. So <laughs> like, yeah, so if you get back in there and win, then what do you want after that? I said, to win again. They're wow. like, are you ever going to be satisfied? I said, probably not. I don't know. Um, that is all I want. Um, yeah, the grind is hard. It's not like training is always fun and, and great. Like, you, like any job, obviously you get paid to be there for a reason. Um, but I do have the coolest job and the funnest job. That doesn't mean that I'll have days that I do kind of feel like just, you know, getting up. We kind of joke with the girls in the gym. It's like sometimes when you're just at the grind and you're going to the gym every day, it's like every now and then I do just feel like getting up, showering and putting makeup on and being clean for the day <laughs> instead of going to the gym. Like, yeah, there's days like that. I would like to just go grab a coffee in regular clothes and not have to bring a bag of four different changes of clothes for every workout I'm going to go through. But those days are fewer than the days that I'm pumped to be at the gym too. So, um, and, and regardless of how I feel in the morning, um, it doesn't matter. By the time I get going in training, I, I love to be there. Even if it's the day that, like I said, it's very few days I wake up and don't feel like going to the gym. But as soon as I start, you know, practice, I'm already excited to be there. Um, I do love my job, that's for sure. Well, that is good to hear. I don't think we're ready to say goodbye to you just yet. So happy to I'm hear. I'm not ready either. So <laughs> you're be ready for me to stick around for a while. Good. That is fantastic. Um, I'm happy to hear that the thumb is getting better. Hopefully, we'll see you sooner rather than later. And and hopefully, I mean, I, I honestly, I think you are owed an apology from some people by you know the way you were treated this past year. But I, I'm happy to hear that you're like a duck. You're you're letting that water just roll off your back. Good for you, uh, class as okay. always. So thank you very much to you, Holly. Looking forward to your thank return. You. Thank you for everything, always. Yes, and uh, we look forward to your return. All the best to you as far as health and, and training is concerned, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for doing this as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Same to you. There she is, Holly Holm, on the comeback trail. Uh, hopefully, maybe we'll see her back this year. I think it will make a lot of sense to see her fight on that card on December 30th, but uh, you got to give her a lot of props. She said uh, she'd fight on televised card. How about that? Someone who just wants to fight and win. Major props to her.